at the end of the day, like just to put it lightly, he's a fuck up, like a pure fuck up. And uh, one time he fucked up really bad, and he ended up he was locked up for a while, and he wasn't in like a traditional jail. He was more of like a it was like a like a medical type situation jail, and he had his problems, he was screws loose and stuff. But anyways, he went through this phase from his time he was 18 to 21 where he was in there and I felt bad for him you know I was like man you're missing out on some really good times you know 18th birthday 19th birthday 20th birthday 21st birthday like oh my gosh so he had this opportunity to get released and every six months he'd have a chance um, to present his case in front of the judge and stuff and and the first time he failed the second time he failed. And the third time I was like, well, maybe, maybe if I go there and present, you know, his story, like how he progressed and how he got better and how he deserved another chance, how, uh, you know, maybe deserve a second chance at, at uh, living free and stuff. And so I went to his, his court case and, uh, and asked the judge, I was like, Hey, can I, you know, just speak at his hearing? And the judge was like, yeah, that's fine. The prosecutor was like, yeah, that's fine. His, Court appointed attorney was like, yeah, that's fine. I don't have to do anything now. And so, so I had written five pages of, of his that talked about his progress, how he started, how he got better, and and stuff. And and so I read this off in court, and uh, the judge didn't hesitate. He looks at me dead in the eye, and he says, "I'm going to let your cousin out today." And I was like, "Oh, great!" And uh, he's like, "But one condition, one condition only." I was like, "Anything, anything. Just let him, you know, just let my cousin out." He says. The only condition is, is that if I let him out, he's got to live with you. And I was like, <laughs> now two things are happening. <laughs> I'm frozen. I'm looking at the judge, and like in my head, I'm like, no fucking way. <laughs> like, there is no way he's coming home with me. And at the same time, I don't want my cousin free, so I'm just like, I look at the judge, I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> and so. He comes home with me, and I'm like, I lay some rules. I'm like, look, dude, like, you gotta, like, you either gotta work, you gotta get, and take some classes. I don't care if you fail your classes. Just, get, you gotta do something. You gotta do something productive. And I'm not the best mentor. I was partying a lot. I was, like, having a good time and stuff, but I was, like, trying to make sure that he had the right, I don't know, be on track and stuff. And so... I get him set up. He's in the. He's a, like I get him set up in the university. He's going. He's taking university classes for free. Um, he's got, like I said, he's got a few issues going on. So he was eligible for like some social security income and stuff like that. So I got him. I fill out all the paperwork. Got him set up on all sorts of different government programs and stuff. And so he was. He's doing good. Like three months go by. He's doing great. Six months goes by and he decides uh, I don't need to take my medication anymore. And now the medication is like the only thing holding his feet to the ground. <laughs> and so he starts screwing up again, right? And I, I'm like, look, we got to figure out something to get him back on track. And so I, I, one day I was like, cousin, I'm not going to use his name, but cousin, get in the car. We're going for a field trip. And he's like, what? He's like, where are we going? Where are we going? We're going to get some girls, going to party. What's going on? I'm like, no, 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 no just, just get in the car. Let's go. So I take him down to the homeless shelter. You know, I didn't drop him off. I should have. <laughs> Looking back at it, I probably should have. <laughs> but I park in front of this homeless shelter, and I'm like, look at, see these people coming in and out of here? He's like, yeah. He's like, what's up? I'm like, if you don't get your situation together, like, you're going to be, if you don't go back to jail, you're going to, or get killed on the street, you're going to be one of these people coming in and out of here. And he's like looking at me like, no, come on, man, let's get out of here, let's get out of here. I was like, okay, well, just... Take a snapshot in your head, like, you know. And so, yeah, this is real. This is getting real, right? And so, uh, um, now, background story. I, at the time, I had a small business. I was selling computer systems to restaurants and stuff. And so I was out of town a lot. And I, like, I spent three, four nights in a different city selling and installing a computer system in a restaurant. And, uh, and so, he was screwing up, and I had a business deal out of town, and um, I had it was like three nights. And when I came home, there's a notice on my door that says a crime has been committed, and you have five days 
to get out of your apartment. Now, the date was three days prior. So the night I left town, he fucked up and went to jail. <laughs> and now I only got 48 hours to pack my stuff and get, get out. And I don't even know what happened. And so I'm like, well, a crime was committed. He's not here. I'm going to go down to the police station and ask the police, hey, what's going on? And so I, I get to the police station and I ask the, the police officer, I was like, well, you know what? What what happened? Why like why am I evicted? And he's like, well, we found your cousin. He um, apparently a drug deal went bad, and we found him with a, a ski mask on and box cutters. And he was trying to break into an apartment. And I was like, he was trying to break into an apartment at my apartment complex. And the police officer was like, no, 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 we found him at this other apartment complex. And I'm like, well, why am I evicted? If it didn't happen where I lived, and he's flipping through the police report, he's like, oh. Well, he did some other stuff at your apartment complex. And I was like, he committed two crimes in one night? And you guys are like, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, and so, and he's like, well, I can't really give you details of what happened at the apartment complex, but go talk to your property manager and they can give you more details and stuff. I was like, all right, cool. So I go talk to the property manager. Apparently he broke into the neighbor's apartment, did some stuff. I'm not even going to talk about that. That was like a whole other situation, but... So, uh, sorry, I gotta back up a little bit. <laughs> Before I left town, <laughs> sorry, I missed the whole big part of this. Before I left town, and after I showed him the homeless shelter, and he kept screwing up, I volunteered for us to volunteer at the homeless shelter. And so we're down at this homeless shelter a couple nights a week and stuff. I'm giving him reality up front, you know, I'm like, and uh, so he, anyways, he goes to jail. I'm still on the calendar to volunteer at the homeless shelter and stuff. I get the eviction notice. I'm practically homeless myself. <laughs> I'm 48 hours away from being homeless, and I'm still on the calendar for the homeless shelter. So I continue volunteering at the homeless shelter because I'm not, this is, is happening at the beginning of the month. They make the calendar for the whole month. I'm on the calendar for the next like four weeks. And um, so anyways, he's in jail. I'm still volunteering at the homeless shelter. And I'm one night, like I worked in like the like the overflow room. There's like, this was a really nice homeless shelter. There was like five stories, there was bedrooms. If you didn't, if you signed up and you didn't have a bedroom, like there's like a giant room and everybody got blankets, pillows and stuff. And this is at Ann Arbor, Michigan. This is a really nice city. There's money there. and. Uh, and so I'm volunteering, I'm sitting at my desk, I'm in the overflow room, and it's nighttime, and um, like anytime anybody need anything, they need bus tokens, they need help with a resume, they need to wash their clothes, they want an extra sandwich, anything they needed, they just come up and ask for it. And I'd help them out. Well, it's like lights out time, and everybody's like just laying down on the floor, and I like got their blanket and stuff, and the entire night I noticed this guy, he's like off in the corner, and he's like up, like kind of raised up and he's just looking at me like like told the whole night just like mean mugging me like you know and, I, and I'm like I didn't think nothing everybody's got their issues whatever I got mine or he's got his whatever well when the lights went out and stuff we're just I'm just sitting there at the desk reading a magazine or something and then I notice this guy he gets up and he comes around the corner and he comes up to the desk and I look up at him I'm like hey is there something I can help you with and this guy just winds up, boom, punches me in the eye. True story. And you're probably like, okay, this has nothing to do with your cousin. Dory, this comes all the way back to my cousin. So this guy punches me in the face. I'm, I'm bleeding. I had to go get three stitches. And uh, I, I jump up from my chair. Luckily, the chair had wheels on it. And it rolled back and didn't just like, tip back. So I was able to get to my feet real quick. I grabbed the guy. I drive him over to the, the elevator. We're on the third floor of this homeless shelter. I, I drag him into the elevator. And the guy's like kicking around. He's trying to get loose. This other volunteer comes over, and I'm like, oh, thank God. He's going to come in and help me with this guy. He reaches in the elevator, pushes the first floor button, and steps out. And he says, I'm going to take the stairs. And he leaves me in the, in the elevator yeah. along with the guy that punched me. And I'm like, the doors are closing, and I'm just like, no, 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 no. 
And so we go down to the first floor, and everybody's screaming at me, just push him out on the street. And I'm like, no, I'm waiting until the police get here, and then I'll let him go and stuff. And uh, I hear the police sirens. The guy's kicking around and stuff, and he gets he gets a little loose. And I see the police car pull up right in front of the door. And uh, so I push the guy out the door. And this guy, <laughs> he runs he runs straight towards the police car. The first police officer gets out of the car, and boom, he hits the cop, punches the police officer right in the face, knocks him out cold. He's out cold in the street between the, between the police car and the curb. And and I'm just standing there, like, I'm still bleeding from my eye. I'm like, what is going on, you know? And uh, he, the guy runs around the, the, the other side of the police car and goes to the driver's side. And it was a female police officer that was driving. She just pulls out her taser and tases him. And I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> finally. <laughs> and so she handcuffs him and sits him on the curb. And I, now I'm standing behind him. I'm like, like as far away from this microphone, he's sitting on the curb. I'm standing right behind him. And I'm like, this guy ain't going to get up and run or nothing. You know, it ain't going to happen. And he's talking to this imaginary person next to him who just happens to have the name Jesus. And he says, Jesus, I got him just like you told me to. And I'm standing there. And I'm like, Jesus told you to punch the guy, the volunteers at the homeless shelter. <laughs> like, what's going on here? And so, anyways, they take him to jail. Yeah, he's got, yeah. <laughs> they take him to jail. And like a few weeks go by, I'm still volunteering at the shelter and stuff. And, and uh, one day I get a call from my cousin. And I'm like, I'm like, what's up, man? What's, what's going on? And I'm still kind of bitter, you know? I was like, I had to move and stuff. And I, I'm surprised I even took the call. But he, he's like, dude, you're never gonna believe this. And I'm like, what's up, what's up? He's like. I was like, did you get your shit together? Are you gonna get free? Like, what's going on? Like, you know, being sarcastic with him and stuff. And he's like, no. He's like, you're not gonna believe this, but remember that homeless shelter you took me to to volunteer at? And I was like, yeah, what's up? And he's like, I'm, I'm friends with this guy. I'm friends with this guy. He's like, he, he's really cool, man. He's, uh, he punched one of the volunteers at the homeless shelter and put a cop in the hospital. And I was like, we're never gonna believe this. <laughs> that volunteer was me. And uh, and, uh, <laughs> and I was like, cousin, I was like, you gotta do me one favor. You gotta do me one favor. And uh, he's like, what's that? I'll do anything, man, I love you, I'll do anything. You've done so much for me. I was like, I'll do anything. I was like, beat that motherfucker's ass. <laughs> My cousin, you know what he says to me? He says, I don't wanna get in any trouble. <laughs> Like, you don't want to get into any trouble. Like, when you was living with me before you got me evicted, you didn't like you didn't want to get in any trouble then, you know? Like, and uh, he's like, yeah, man, I just I just don't want to get in trouble. I was like, you're in the thick of the action of getting in trouble. You're in jail. You can't get in any more trouble. Just do me a favor. Beat the motherfucker's ass. <laughs> he didn't do it. He's friends with the guy. But, <laughs> But anyways, yeah, if, you're, if your life is on track and it's going really well, and you need like a complete train thrill, give me your number, I'll give you my cousin's phone number. He can, he's always looking for a place to stay when he gets out. Thanks for letting me share.